right. Welcome back for the second half of this class. I'm glad y'all made it back. I, I swear. Oh, you see, like, there's always a few folks that forget we have a second half of the class that then just sort of drift away uh, after spring break. Um, but uh, I'm glad you're all here. Uh, we're going to continue talking about images today. And um, I'm, I'm first going to start off talking about ways that you can get images. All right. And, and know that images really, um, I, I suppose they would, uh, you know, that you could talk about either like drawings or you could talk about photographs. For the most part, we're going to be talking about photographs. All right. But again, a lot of what we say applies to uh, uh, drawings as well. Um, the one difference is, is again, in the file format, if you recall, uh, recall from previous two spring break, where a GIF might be a good format for a drawing, whereas it's not going to be a good uh, format for a photograph. A JPEG or a PFG would be better for a photograph. All right, what are some ways that we can, let's say you have to do a project. And I'm not talking about a school project where you could go out and and use Google and find people's pictures, all right, just from a website as long as you gave credit. Let's say you were actually doing a commercial website and you were bound by copyright law a little more tightly than you are in an academic situation. What are some ways that you could obtain pictures for your website or multimedia projects in general? What are some ways? I'm hoping one way is obvious. <laughs> Yourself. Yeah. <laughs> Get a camera and take them yourself. <laughs> and the reason I'm, I'm, I, I want to have uh, this discussion is because for a lot of people, <coughs> this is the only option that they consider, you know. And I'll tell you, nowadays, you know, I risk of sounding like an old timer, um, with digital photography and with the equipment that exists, and with the editing software that's available, um, people can take decent pictures um, with relatively inexpensive equipment. So in the past, this might have been true, but it might not have been done quite as often. And I'm not talking about web days, I'm talking about pre-web days, like print days. You know, you'd be more apt to take one of the other methods. That being said, I still want to point out that there are other methods of obtaining photographs other than taking them yourself. All right? What are some of those other methods of obtaining photographs other than taking them yourself? Yes? Buying them. Buying them. Buying them from who? Companies that sell them. Okay. All right. Um, I guess uh, what I'm hearing in your answer is something called stock photos. Uh, what are stock photos? Well, a photographer or an organization or whatever will take a bunch of very generic pictures that could be used in a lot of different contexts, right? They may take a picture of four or five people sitting around the table talking, you know, looking as though they're talking or discussing something. And wh who could use that? What kind of websites could use that? Well, a school could use that, a church could use that, a nonprofit organization could use that. A lot of different people could use that. And when you put it on that page, people are going to think, oh, that's a group of students talking about something. Or, oh, that's a group of members of this organization discussing something, or so on. Or maybe if you have a generic picture of someone running, all right? You could use that to promote a race that you're having. Or you could use it to promote your fitness club. Or a hospital could, could do it to promote some sort of fitness program or education program or something like that. So that's the idea of stock photographs is, or stock photography, is that there's, there's a, a lot of these images available, all right? And um, they're made available, and you can use them, and you can use them. And what would be the benefit of using a stock photo as opposed to taking them yourself. What are you getting when you pay for it? Yes? You're getting perfect lighting, yeah. uh, perfect images, there's no glare, it just looks like 
Exactly. Like awesome. You're getting very professional quality work. Now, I mentioned before that um, with today's digital editing and digital cameras, you know, you can take decent pictures. Even some folks can make decent pictures on their phones. I have an Android phone, and I love the pictures that it takes. It takes good pictures. But that being said, they're not necessarily professional quality pictures. All right? Are they good enough for a website? Well, I guess it depends what the website is and what the resources are uh, and, and so on. So you get better quality, probably better quality. You get something, you get the convenience. For example, if you were talking about rock climbing on your website, you wouldn't have to go out somewhere where there were rocks to climb, all right, and take photos of it. You could simply purchase it. So there might be some convenience, you know. And maybe in some cases a generic picture is just as good. As I mentioned before, a health club promoting it. It doesn't really matter who they show running, all right, or uh, a school that maybe would use a stock photo of people grouped around a table. It doesn't really matter that those people don't really attend that school, you know. Now, again, the disadvantage that you have is that it is generic, all right? Uh, you may want to actually, depending on the message that you try to get, have actual students of the LCCC in a photograph. You might say that would make more impact instead of just having, you know, four models sitting around a table, have four actual students that you could put their names and their majors and that maybe other people visiting the site would actually know those people and therefore would have a closer, tighter connection to them. So again, advantages and disadvantages uh, both ways. I'm going to pull up a, a, a stock photo site and I'll tell you, the internet has killed the stock photo industry. All right? It used to be in the old days that if you were a photographer and you had a, a really good film camera, and you took stock photos, you could make tons of money doing that. All right? Now, well, you know, supply and demand, right? The supply of photographs has gone through the roof. All right? And therefore, the price is driven way down. So uh, the, the, the Internet and the web and, and all this technology really has sort of uh, damaged people in stock uh, photography. There's a couple terms that, that people use for this. One of them is um, that they talk about uh, crowdsourcing. And crowdsourcing is where instead of having an individual do something, you know, you put it out to the, to the wind and, and, and see who's going to take you on that. There's websites where you could, you know, ask for something and people can create it and, and you can purchase it. Um, let me bring it up here. All right, I stock photo. Probably a lot of other sites as well.
all right, and, and someone killed him, and I don't even remember the rest of the story. I really just saw the part that my brother was in. I may have watched the whole thing once, but I don't remember. But anyhow, he played the brother uh, of this person, and it was interesting because I asked him, now, how in the world were you able to prepare to play a part of an older brother of a geek? And he's like, well, it sort of came natural for me. <laughs> At any rate, he'll say, just, you know, every now and then, out of the blue, he'll get a check for, you know, 20 bucks. Or, you know, not like giant amounts, but like if it's rerun on USA Network or whatever cable network is on, he'll get a little chunk of money. If you do happen to see that episode, he's the brother at the beginning, they, they, they question him about it. You know, they don't, he's not a suspect, but they question him just to get some background information. But anyhow, that's the idea. Royalty implies paid per use. So in other words, if you are going to, if you purchase this royalty free, it means you can use it, and you don't have to pay every time you use it. So if you have that proverbial picture of someone running, if you put it uh, in a brochure, and if you put it on your website, and if you put it someplace else, it's not like you have to pay every time. Or even if you put it like in your organization's publication, you don't have to pay for every copy of it that's pre uh, printed or whatever. So it's royally free. In other words, you pay a fee and you get to use it within certain constraints. Let's go and do a search for this. Let's look up running for the heck of it. And it will show a list of things that we can, we could buy if we want to. All right, here's one. Female marathon runner um, goes for a run, and you can purchase it either small, medium, large, or extra run. Notice that there's a watermark on there that would keep us from going in and saving the picture and using it without that, all right, and try to get around it. Um, they talk about how many credits there is, and they also describe the kind of lysing that you can, uh, you can get. Let's look at how much credits are. All right. Six credits are $9.99, so that's $1.60 a credit. All right. Uh, uh, and, and you can, if you buy more, you can get cheaper. So somewhere between a dollar sixty and a dollar fifty. But then they have some other plans that might be cheaper still. So, but anyhow, we can figure on roughly a dollar fifty. Just you know, we don't have to be exact here. So if we look at this, we see that to purchase. Which one do we click on? This one. To purchase a gigantic copy that you could put, you know, in, you know, you could you could go and put in the front of your fitness center if you wanted to. A giant resolution uh, of this, 5,000 by uh, 3,400 pixels, would be 45 times a dollar 50. That would be about 60 bucks. All right. To purchase a small version, let's say we just wanted a small version uh, on our site. Um, would be six credits, would be roughly uh, ten bucks, give or take. So again, compared to the old days of stock photography, that's, that's dirt cheap. All right? Now you may even be able to find things um, cheaper than that. All right? Likewise, they have illustrations that you can, you can get the same way. They also have video, audio, and flash. So they sort of have done that. It would be awesome if, if they had uh, a stock flash that would fulfill your assignment. But I don't think they do, and you need the source code, so just forget about it. Don't even think it. All right? But that's one way of obtaining photos, and you shouldn't discount. All right? Again, several ways of obtaining photos. That's one, and again, just because you have a camera, there may be causes for you to go and take that. For example, that big giant image, you know, I have a pretty good digital SLR, and it doesn't take one that big, right? It doesn't take a, a, an image that big. What was it, like 5,000 by 9,000? I don't remember the, the dimensions. But at any rate, it doesn't take it that big. So it might be best just to purchase that if I needed a really, really giant uh, copy of the picture. All right, what's another way that we can obtain images other than taking it yourself and stock photography, stock photos? Yes. Like 
mentioned earlier in the course on uh, Flickr. Okay. Uh, where you could go in and choose the, the photos right. that uh, are not copyrighted. And you could right, right. Uh, Flickr is just one place where those are, are, are uh, featured. But um, in general, the concept would be you could, you could use Creative Commons license. Yeah, Creative Commons. All right. Uh, and again, you know, we can go and look for really Creative Commons um, anything, but since our, we're, we're, we're interested in photographs, let's, let's Google that. Creative Commons images. All right. Yahoo apparently has Creative Commons licensing as well. Let's see, do they have more? Let's see if we can find a list of them. Flickr Creative Commons and Commons is budget stock photos, an overview of that. Let's do a search, and let's search for the same running. And we'll search. And I want to use it for commercial purposes. Remember, the original assumption was that this wasn't something just for educational purposes. And I want maybe to be able to modify that. So let's go and search Flickr for running. We'll do the same search. We'll see what they come up with. All right. Now, I will say, at a glance, looking at these, they don't necessarily, at least the ones that I'm seeing here, don't necessarily look to be up to the quality of the stock photograph, right? Because this could be any, any joker out there, all right, that wants to just, you know, get a credit on a site and get a kick out of it. They don't look like they're running. Yeah, I don't know. Maybe they're running from the law. I don't know. Now notice one thing, there is a quarter of a million results, give or take. Obviously, as we can tell, not all of these are going to be good. So, you know, that's sort of a, a issue with that. With stock photography, when we looked at those uh, uh, pictures, pretty much all of them that we pointed at looked pretty good. I mean, you could just pick one at random and it would be good. Here I think we're going to have to dig a little deeper to get something that's good. But it's free, right? So even though you have the uh, advantage uh, or you, you don't necessarily have the advantage of, of a consistent professional quality, you might have to dig a little bit, all right, um, you know, it's free. So you have that big advantage. Now, I would say in this particular case, all right, I really haven't found any that I would uh, use, that I would even consider in, this, in the same ballpark as some of the professional ones. Now, these are starting to get good. All right, these are starting to get better. And if you notice, once you do that, you know, notice the name of the person that took it and look just on their site. So Peter Mooney looks like he, he's not uh, in a rock band that happens to have the word runner in it or something. All right. Oh. <laughs> if we were doing, yeah, if we were doing something else, that might be perfect. Um, we might be able to find something that's acceptable there. All right. But that's the nature of the beast, right? It's hit and miss. You know, you may find something that's good, um, and you can use it. Now, here's the thing. You do need to be concerned about the, 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 the specifics of the Creative Commons license, right? Because simply because it's licensed with a Creative Commons license doesn't mean that you can, you can just flat out use it, 
There's always, there's conditions on it. There may be conditions on it that you are required to give attribution. All right? Most of the time, that's a requirement, but not always. So you, you are likely to be required to give some sort of credit for that, which, you know, most of the time when you use someone else's picture, you're probably going to have to do that. Um, not all Creative Commons are licensed for um, for um, a commercial use. So it might be Creative Commons, and yeah, if you are a nonprofit organization and you want to use it, they may let you use it. But if you are starting a gym and you want a picture of someone running, you might not be able to use it. So whether it can be used strictly for non-commercial use or commercial and non-commercial use. The last thing is, is are you able to create any derivative works with it? And what a derivative works uh, are, uh, you know, is essentially, uh, you know, uh, remix of it. In other words, take and, and alter it in some way. All right. Maybe we take that image of the dog, all right, and pop that into another image of someone running, right? Well, we better make sure both of those are, are uh, were permitted to, to, to use derivative works or make derivative works uh, based on those photos. So again, do you do need to pay attention to the specifics of the licensing. And let's say we decided this one was one that we wanted. Um, we could click on and get the details of the license. In this case, um, for you to share, distribute, and transmit it, and remix, I'm allowed to, to adapt the work. But I have to give attribution, so I have to say that this guy pick, uh, took the picture. And anything I make has to have this license on it as well. So I can't take this guy's image, remix it, put the flying dog in it, and then try to copyright that image and try to, to put it out as copyright. So I would have to make my picture available. And that's very common with Creative Commons licensing. The, the, you know, it's like, yeah, you could use my thing and change it, but then don't put restrictions on it then, you know, it, since I think sharing is a good idea, the sharing shouldn't stop with me, you know, go in and share the work that you do as well. <clears throat> Any of these can be waived if you get permission. I mean, that's always the case, right? You know, if the, if the owner of the copyright or the owner of the image uh, tells you it's okay to use it, then you can use it, right? I mean, this is assuming, again, that, that you know, uh, that you're looking for something that you don't know the photographer and haven't explicitly got permission to use it. Can we think of any other ones? Any other ways of getting an image? just for you. You're not taking a generic picture and adapting it to your circumstances. So, for example, um, you know, my brother, who is a, a you know, a, a, a sometime actor, all right, when he wants a picture taken, you know, he's not going to use a stock photo, you know, and, and take, you know, G find a photo of a really good looking guy and then put a, you know, and pay the 10 bucks for it. No, he's not going to do that. Probably not going to take it himself either, right? Because you really want a very, very, very professional looking uh, look. You know, with the lighting and all that and, and, and all that. 
and you really want a photographer to make you look your absolute best, you know. So you go and hire a photographer to go and take images just for you. Now again, you know, there, there's, there's like three factors that, that you can see that, that interact in all of these. There is how custom it is to your situation, how good it is, and how expensive it is. And I suppose a fourth dimension is how much hassle it is for you. So, you know, we can sort of rank these things based on these factors. Taking the picture yourself, yeah, it's going to be exactly what you want. Is it going to be good? Well, it depends how good your equipment is and how good you are. Expensive? Probably not terribly expensive, no. Will it be a hassle? It could be, depending on what it is that you want to take a picture of. Stock photo. Is it custom for you? No. Is it good? Yeah, it will be good. Is it expensive? Well, there's some expense to it. Is it a hassle? No, not really at all. And then so, so far down the line, you know. The, general speaking, like, the more that you have of these, the more expense you have. The more custom it is to you, the more expensive it's going to be. The better quality, the more expensive. And the more, the more hassle, actually the less hassle, the more expensive that, that the image would be. You know, because you're paying for it. You're paying for the convenience of just being able to go and, and click and say, yep, I want this picture of, of someone running. Now, one thing that I've, I've stressed about in this, in this uh, class is um, common themes, all right? That even if we're looking at one particular multi piece of multimedia, like in this case we're talking about images, um, that we can come to some themes that are common that cross the lines. These four things, I would say, are examples of common ways to obtain most any sort of multimedia element. Let's say I want some music. I could make it myself, right? I could go to a stock site and buy some generic canned music. I could look to see what's there for Creative Commons, or I could go and commission a composer, all right? Or, you know, hire a band, maybe that band that was running, you know, I don't know. And again, <laughs> these four things will come into play with that, kind of in the same way. Creative Commons is cheap, right? But it might be a little bit of hassle finding something that's really good. Right? Um, it's not expensive. The quality, well, you know, it's, it's almost like uh, flea market shopping, right? Or, or garage sale shopping. You might find a treasure and there's something that's really, really good that's perfect for your needs, or it might be like our experience with the running photographs, where we found some that were maybe okay, but nothing was really dazzling for me. Obviously, to hire musicians to record, it's going to be very expensive. And to play it yourself, you get the idea. You can say that about just about any multimedia. Um, video as well. There's stock video, you know, just like there's stock images and so on. So, there's always something to consider. Don't limit yourself. Consider your project and consider these factors and how they play with each other to make the right decision as far as what you want to do for your particular project. All right? Don't think it's just like, well, multimedia, I got to create it all. No, you don't. All right? Um, it, it, it's funny. I, I, heard, I heard someone once say, that is hard to explain like what a multimedia designer does, right? Because, you know, depending on the project, it's kind of like, did you write the words on the site? No, someone else wrote that, all right? Did you take the pictures on the site? Well, no, someone else took the pictures. You know, well, gee, what did you do, though, all right? Uh, think of creating a multimedia project, though, as being sort of like, you know, 